so glad to be with you here today at Penobscot Marine Museum. Please write comments and questions. We love hearing from you. In fact, a little later, we will ask you which painting you want to see next. Stay tuned. In our collections, we have several paintings by Percy A. Sanborn, a local artist from the 19th century. Percy Sanborn was born in Waldo in 1849 and lived much of his life in Belfast, painting Penobscot Bay ships. And here we have the William H. Connor, the last and largest ship built in Searsport, built by Marlborough Packard in 1877 in the Carver Shipyard, which uh, is just down the road from where our museum is today. The vessel sailed for two decades and actually earned back the $100,000 it cost to build, which only about 15% of ships in the 19th century managed to do that. So this is a wonderfully detailed painting. We can see all of the lines and blocks, and tackle, crew winding up ropes, a shiny anchor. Some crew must have worked hard scraping that. Beautiful gold carving on the figurehead. Another full rigged ship in the distance. Someone looking out. Someone steering. There's a steamship on the other side in the distance. Signal flags fluttering in the breeze. Many old ships are converted to something else near the end of its life, uh, such as a barge. And that's just what they did with the uh, William H. Connor. Um, and then after uh, serving as a barge for a while in 1909, uh, the barge collided with schooner Hugh Kelly at Sandy Hook and sunk. Most of Percy Sanborn's paintings are of ships, but this is a fun exception. This is a painting of Moose Point, and actually it looks like he was sitting or standing with his easel on Moose Point, looking out at Belfast Bay in this image. We can see these high craggy rocks, and with trees on top, there's a birch and possibly poplar. There's a beautiful uh, blue sky with puffy clouds and seagulls flying, a couple of three-masted schooners. There are uh, some fun little details on the shore a uh, broken up barrel and a boy with a frayed rope. There's a couple of men in a dory hand lining, which is a, a way of fishing where you have a, a very simple rectangular wooden block with line just wrapped around it and you'd have a hook and some bait on your hook. And it's a great way to catch codfish, or was when there were codfish. And this is a really ancient way of fishing. The Vikings a thousand years ago fished for cod that way and that became their stock fish after they freeze dried it in the cold air. And that was Viking currency, and it also allowed them to sail for really long voyages. It was also uh, what John Smith's men did when they came to the Gulf of Maine. 
It was uh, one of the things John Smith wrote about in his book, encouraging people to move from England to New England and Virginia. And that book is one of the reasons why the pilgrims, so-called, the, the English settlers moved to Plymouth Patuxet in Massachusetts. So handlining for codfish is a big part of New England history in the beginning of the United States. Moose Point is the upper northern part of Belfast Bay. Uh, we can see Blue Hill in the distance here. And uh, Moose Point is now a beautiful state park and one of my favorite places to take a walk. You can see this is uh, very recent. You can see the same dark rocks jutting out here with trees. Um, and there's a, a couple of these spots where rocks jut out. And I've got just a short little video for you to give you a taste of Moose Point. is the Clipper Ship Northern Lights, another painting by Percy Sanborn. Thank you so much for joining us today at Penobscot Marine Museum. Write your comments and questions below. We love hearing from you. And today we've got some 19th century paintings by Percy Sanborn. This was a very fast ship. It was designed by Samuel Hart Pook who also designed the famous uh, and record-breaking Red Jacket. And we'll be talking about the Red Jacket in just a couple of weeks. Another uh, very detailed painting with all of the lines and shiny chains and anchors. I love this figurehead. It looks like she's playing a trumpet perhaps. She's got long flowing hair. There's some crew on the deck, uh, capstan. Another uh, ship in the distance. Also looks like a clipper ship with all of those many sails built to go fast. I also love the, the setting, this sort of lovely moonlit night. That was a big part of sailing for mariners. They are up for four hours, sleeping for four hours back and forth so that there's a crew working at all hours all, as well as all day, all night too. And at night is one of the times when you're navigating and looking at the stars to figure out where you are. So they're doing as much of their work at night as during the day. So this may evoke things for mariners who and captains who were working at night like this. Um, Maria is asking any relation to Hart's shipyard in Boston where the USS Constitution was built? That is a great question. I would have to look that one up to be sure. Thanks though, I love those questions. And we'll, we'll look that up and get an answer to you. In 1851, Northern Light sailed to San Francisco in only 109 days. Captain Hatch sailed her back in 1853, so same trip on the way back, in under 77 days, which is amazing. They must have had just the right wind because one of the days on that trip, they sailed 355 miles in one single day. Just like 
most of my friends who uh, are working in the arts today. Percy did a variety of odd jobs to make ends meet. He worked as a sign painter, created decorative window shades for businesses in Belfast. He drew illustrations for the Belfast newspaper. He painted theater scenes. He also painted murals, and one can still be seen in the Taj in Boston. Uh, when I was there, it was called the Ritz Carlton. A uh, painting of a ship in that now it's now the boardroom. Sanborn was also a violinist playing in the Belfast Symphonic Orchestra. He taught music lessons. And he would also paint your cat for five dollars. And I enjoy this parlor scene photograph by Charles Coons, who was a local photographer at the end of the 19th century, the beginning of the 20th century. There's a woman reading a periodical here, a shiny metal hearth, a decorative mantle, some photographs maybe of family and friends. A boy is resting. And right in the center here is a beloved cat, a Maine Coon cat, and loved enough that someone wanted a portrait by Percy Sandwell. Thank you so much for joining us this week. I love spending time with you and telling you about these paintings. I have a question for you. What would you prefer next week? We've got Liverpool or Livorno. What do you think? Which would you prefer? Liverpool or Livorno? Write your answer down below. We will tally up answers from uh, Facebook and YouTube, and we will bring you what you want. Whichever one gets the more votes is the one that we will do next Friday. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. This programming has been made possible in part by the National Endowment for the Humanities exploring the human endeavor. Thank you also to our members and our donors for making these presentations possible. And I really enjoy it. I hope you all have a great week and take care. <laughs>